I'll go and have one then. Cheers, Mike. Just till I get me wages. Well, you'll be lucky to get any wages, you will, after your short career in the ice cream trade there. But I, I wouldn't have taken you back on. Why not? Good plumber like me, worth his weight in fur line lavatory seats. <laughs> <laughs> Packing in a secured job to drive an ice cream van in the middle of winter? <laughs> You're worth your weight in blocked up U bends, more likely. Cheers. Oh, you won't go hungry, will you? No, I won't, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, what are you doing for the old Yuletide season, then? Eh? Christmas. What are you doing for Christmas? Oh, nothing special, probably. Don't go in for Christmas, really. Waste of time, isn't it? Don't like Santa Claus much, either. Always struck me as a bit weird, you know. I mean, you have a good look at him. He's just an old pervert with a sack. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. And he works one night a year, and he spends that dangling his gum boots down other people's chimneys. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I blocked up the aperture, then, and had the central heating put in. No, I'm talking about going home, you and your brother, back up to your dad's. Oh, no fear. Wild ferrets wouldn't drag me back up there. Oh, well, I mean, me and my lads, we've always had our differences, but, I mean, come Christmas, always make a point of patching it up. Always make a point of boozing it up, you mean? Well, what you gonna do for the Christmas holidays, then? Sit looking at the lino? No, I don't know. I might start the Arthur Scrooge Appreciation Society. Sit there sticking knitting needles into a wax effigy of Tiny Tim. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be gaiety and laughter all round at your place, then, isn't it? It's like waiting for Godot in that bedsit. No one comes, no one goes, nothing happens. You could die in there, and as long as your skeleton kept on leaving the rent money in an envelope, no one would know. <laughs> See, but, I mean, how's you gonna put any decorations up? Shouldn't think so. Well, I might give the cockroaches a lick of paint and hang them up. <laughs> I don't know, I'll give up on you straight, I do. Here, where's our wages? What are you getting me for Christmas, then, Mike? Oh, I'll give you a thick ear in wrapping paper, bloody cheek. What are you giving me? Well, I thought I'd give you something useful. That's a book on decorating. Wait, well. <laughs> here you are, then. Oh, well. Taylor. Oh. Connor. Oh, Christmas bonus in here, is it? Pay for the hamper. You'll find something in there. Weber. Oh. oh, it's a bit thin, isn't it? It's a full week's work. Makes a full wage packet. Weber. Yes, Mr. Norris. Yes, right. Yeah, look at this. How much bonus have you got? Bonus. Owing to the economic climate, the company feels it would be inappropriate to give the customary annual bonus. Nevertheless, we take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a double drainer home in Look, please note, a full day must be worked on Christmas Eve. See, I told you, Scrooge was right. These are the cards, Brian, you see. They're printed on recycled paper and all the proceeds go to the East Caribbean Save the Turtle Fund. <laughs> oh! Well, in that case, Sonia, I'll certainly have some. Yeah, I'll just give you some money. It would be really nice if you could come home for Christmas, Brian. Well, I'd like to, Sonia. It's very nice of you to ask. I had to go back home, really. Well, you know what parents are like. It really sort of pumps them up if you can get home for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're grateful that you take the trouble, you know? Yeah, well, I'll just check with Steve when I see him, find out which day he's going back to Dad's. And to be quite honest, it would help to ease the tension if you were there. I find myself getting really uptight in these heaped plate situations. Oh, do you not get on, then? Well, they can't understand I'm a vegetarian now. Oh, I see. It's carnage in the deep freeze, is it? I think they spend a fortnight freaking out with meat cleavers. Well, what do you have instead, then? Well, I eat the rest. I just don't eat the turkey. But otherwise, it's sort of puddings and stuff and presents and things. It's sort of really traditional, you know. Well, I look forward to that, Sonia, because Christmas at home, you know, our mum not being there, well, without a woman, it can be a bit gruff. Not mind you, Brian, that a woman shouldn't be gruff at Christmas, if that's what she's into. Oh, no, Sonia, no. I mean, women are entitled to yeah. be as gruff as men. Even gruffer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying there weren't, no. Oh, and, um, we would have adjacent bedrooms if you came. Oh, you mean sort of, uh, <laughs> next to each other? <laughs> It's thick piled carpet on the landing, is it? Yeah, it seems to sort of muffle footsteps and things. <laughs> <sighs> oh, well, I'll see you later on then. Right you are, Sonia. Thanks again. Oh, um, there is just one thing about my parents. Um, they are very achievement geared and status orientated. Oh, well, I'm bound to like them. I'm sure we'll get on. It's just that they're very into affluence and putting money into building societies. What do you mean, Sonia? Well, I know that you're studying to go to university, and I know that working in a garage is nothing to be ashamed of. Well, who's ashamed of it? I'm not, are you? Oh, no, I think it's really tremendous to work in a garage. I mean, I know lots of people, doctors and people, who really wish they could go and work in a garage <laughs> and live that kind of life. If only your parents would prefer not to pass the gravy to someone who does work in money. Sorry, Brian. 
It's just I told them you were here on a sociology project, investigating mental illness in four court attendance. <laughs> I'm sorry, you think I'm a snob, don't you? Yes. Oh, no. I know how you feel. Every time I see Steve, I look for a plausible explanation. Today it doesn't matter, I'll come. Hi, Bray. Molesting the customers again. <laughs> oh, Sonia, it's you. Steve, what do you want? Uh, I'll have a nice glass of four star and a pound out the till, please. <laughs> hey, this is festive. Had any wise men on camels round yet, topping up with hump grease? Uh, I'd really better be going. Oh, Steve, have you bought any Christmas cards yet? No, why? Do you like to buy one of these? Oh, no. No, thanks. I never buy from non-profit making organisations. <laughs> hey, Steve, there's nothing wrong with them. Those charity cards hardly cheer you up, though, do they? You get one through your letterbox saying Happy New Year from all at the leper colony. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Oh, what are you saying, I know Sonia? what you were saying, Steve, and what you were implying. Well, they're just a bit of a racket, aren't they? I mean, you get within ten days of Christmas, and people who've been healthy all year suddenly start limping and asking for money. <laughs> I'll see you later on, then, Brian. Goodbye. You always manage to do it, don't you? I think you upset Sonia deliberately. I can't afford to throw me money away. Oh. What will you be doing with it this Christmas then, Steve, eh? Sparing a thought for no one but yourself, same as usual. Oh, you've gone to the market in finer feelings, have you? At least I don't spend flag days hiding in darkened rooms. What, hey, excuse me. What do you think this is, then, eh? A bloodshot remembrance cabbage? You've had that puppy for three years! <laughs> <laughs> Meaning... Yeah, you're always thinking of others, aren't you, Steve? Uh, it's, uh, uh, number three, I think. Would you please wait your turn? Yeah, people need to have an argument you. nothing! Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, thank you. Um... Come again. <laughs> what do you want? Well, just between the two of us, like in strictest confidence, how much are you going to spend on me Christmas present? Well, just between the two of us, like in strictest confidence, I might not buy you one. Oh, come on, I can't buy you yours until I know how much you're going to spend on mine. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, a hate me travelling in the wrong direction will put you out of orbit for months, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, tell me what you want. Right, I made a list. What do you want? Oh, get me a couple of records. All right. Oh, and Steve, which day are you going back to Dad's? Christmas Eve or the day before? Oh, I'm not going home at all. What? And when you finish with that, will you take off what you bought me and pass it on to Sonia? Cheers. See ya. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> well, why won't you go back? Well, why should I? Well, of course, if you're determined not to go back to Dad's, and I can't go anywhere either. I've got to stay here with you. You can go where you want. I don't need you as nursemaid and companion. I don't need you bouncing me up and down and thumping me on the back. Quite capable of breaking wind for myself now, you know. <laughs> Well, you can sit there doing tornado impressions for all I care. You're not spending Christmas on your own, and that's that. Well, what do you think I'm going to do? Get a reindeer in the family way? <laughs> Quite frankly, Steve, I don't think that spending that amount of time on your own is something you can cope with. Oh, hark at you. You're the well-adjusted mentality, are you? The cliff that never crumbles. Pull out another toenail, he can stand anything but a round of drinks. <laughs> the only way you'd see it through is with a pint of Mogadom and a loaf of Valium sandwiches. Yeah, even that's preferable to Dad's cooking. His turkeys come out the oven looking colder than when they went in. <laughs> Christmas at home is never as bad as that, and don't make out it was. All your memories are distortions. Inaccurately assembled identikits, all wearing moustaches they never had. An innocent past wrongly convicted. Yesterday's unreliable witness, that's you. The only near-decent Christmas we had was in 1968, when a misdirected sunbeam accidentally came through the curtains. It almost <laughs> made it to the opposite wall, but Dad had his shoes off and killed it with his socks. <laughs> Hey, remember that game we used to have when Dad would fall asleep after dinner? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We'd take bets on which nostril he'd start whistling out of. <laughs> hey, one of us ought to go back. Well, it's me throughout, don't forget. Ah, it's a pity to think of him up there on his own, though. Yeah, just him, a sack of chips and 49 beer bottles. <laughs> I take it you don't mind signing a card to him? Well, why don't you go back? I'm sure he'd rather see you than me. You are the number one son, after all. For the umpteenth time, he did not discriminate. I wasn't his favourite. Oh, not much. You get a fatherly pat on the head, by the time it had reached me, it turned into a kick up the bum. <laughs> Why are you so convinced he doesn't like you? Because I was a beer baby. You were wanted. You were the result of matrimonial affection. I was just the result of too much brown ale. <laughs> if that's what you think, there's nothing much I can do about it, is there? Oh, look, Brian, go to Sonia's. I don't want to spoil your Christmas. I am not leaving on your own, and that's fine. Well, why not? Because. Well, because I'd be worried. Hey, I've got the answer to all our problems. What? Well, instead of staying here for Christmas, 
I'll come to Sonia's with you. I don't want to rush you, Brian, but I've got to phone my parents and let them know tonight. Yes. Well, the thing is, Sonia, you see, um, matters at home are not all they should be between Steve and our dad. I hate his guts, you see. <laughs> of course you realise that a lot of father-son antagonisms can arise from accidental encounters in the bathroom. <laughs> well, Sonia did a considerable amount of psychology at university, Steve. In fact, one of her tutors was well famous for implanting electrodes in rats' heads. Oh, I bet the rats enjoyed that. <laughs> what I mean is, Steve, did you ever see your father having a bath? No. But then again, you were lucky to see him having a wash, so... <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> that aside, Sonia, the thing is, in the circumstances, Steve is naturally reluctant to go back. And if I went to your house, he would, in effect, be... I'd be on my own. Yes. For Christmas. Just me, all on my own, in the bedsit. All alone in a bedsitter in London. Just me. For days on end. Yes. I wouldn't have any company, you see. Yes. I'd be on my own. <laughs> all alone. Lonely and frightened. Yes, all right, Steve. I think you've established your credentials as a cause for concern. I see. So if I understand you correctly, you don't want to come? Oh, no. Well, what I was thinking of, Sonia... Well, actually, it was Steve's suggestion. Was that, um, possibly, um, he, he could come to your parents as well. <laughs> well, normally, of course. I mean, we're very into hospitality. I mean, any other time I'd be... I mean, well, it's just that we don't have another spare room. That's all right. I share with Brian, eh? Oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm looking to feel you lucky or anything. I'll go and sit in the loo. Steve, do you mind? <laughs> there are other problems too, Steve. A question of chairs at the table, whether there's enough food. It's not that I don't want you, Steve. You'd just rather I went somewhere else. Look, Steve, I don't mean to be rude, but my parents are both elderly people <clears throat> now, and the sight of you with a tablecloth stuffed down your shirt front, demolishing their turkey with your knife, fork and elbows, is not a thing I would inflict on elderly people with poor circulation in their legs. <laughs> I think I'd better have another pint after that. <laughs> Sonia, what do you have to say that for? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Steve. I don't mean to be unreasonable, but everywhere we go, there's three of us. Why can't there just be two for a change? I'll oh, be fair, Sonia. You can hardly expect me and Brian to go around your house on our own. <laughs> <laughs> Sonia, I do want to come. Oh, I know. It's just... Oh, I know. It's not Romeo and Juliet for us, is it? It's Romeo and Juliet and Romeo's younger brother. Horace. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just go and phone him, tell him you're not coming. Oh, look, you do understand. Oh, yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, Sonia. Uh, I've got something for you. For Christmas. Little present. Steve, I don't know what to say. I'm... Thank you. It's uh, 50 fags. <laughs> Steve, haven't you noticed I don't smoke? <laughs> Don't you? Oh, never mind. No sense in wasting them. I do. <laughs> Hiya. Christmas Eve again, then, eh? Have you not got your stockings at the end of the bed yet? No, I thought this year I'd hang up my pants for a change. <laughs> Wouldn't do that or your presents would fall out the leg. <laughs> Doing a spot of cooking? No, I'm washing my laundry. <laughs> Sonia gone home, has she? Just don't mention it, Steve, all right? What's this? Oh, uh, I've got a few decorations. Oh, what happened to you? I thought you were the lightweight cynic of the world. What's this? Touch of humanity? I just made a few small concessions, that was all. Hey, I got a tree. <laughs> I've seen bigger mushrooms than that. There's nothing wrong with it. Hey, you don't think it'll make the room too small? Look, Brian, you don't have to be sarcastic. It was all they had left in the shop. Hey, I've got a fairy to go on the top of it. <laughs> There's more fairy than there is tree. <laughs> it was all they had left in the shop. Did you think they'd buy any decorations? Well, according to you, we weren't going to get any. Here, what's this? Well, what does it look like? It's a crib, isn't it? What did you think it were? A toast rack? <laughs> well, where's the rest of it? It's not much good like that, is it? Don't tell me. It's all they had left in the shop. Look, Bran, I couldn't afford to get a baby Jesus for it. All right. So we just got the crib. I thought we could use something else. Like what? Well, I thought we could paint a face on our boiled egg and stick that in it. 
slight difference, though, isn't there, Steve? I mean, it's hard to imagine the three wise men turning up at Bethlehem and saying, has the Messiah come? And they say, no, not personally, but he has sent along a very nice hard-boiled egg with a face <laughs> painted on it. Look, Brian, I couldn't afford to get a decent baby Jesus. All right, I walked all over the place. Couldn't get a decent baby Jesus anywhere for under a fiver. And wondering stars were a bit pricey, you know. So it's a toss-up between a baby Jesus and half a bottle of scotch. So I got the scotch. <laughs> Well, that's what Christmas is all about, after all, isn't it, Steve? I got some tinsel and all. <laughs> you don't think you overdid it with that, Look, do you? Look, Brian, it was all, all I had left in the shop. I know. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite a difference now. The decorations are up, doesn't it? Oh, yes. You know, I hardly recognise the place. Minutes ago, this could have been a crummy bed sit anywhere in London. Look at it now. Bit of tinsel, a fairy a tree, a crib for your hard-boiled egg, and voila! Santa's elf in grotto. <laughs> All right. Then perhaps I'll just have to eat me Christmas dinner on my own, then. Hey, where are you going? Ah. Here we are. What's this? <laughs> A piece of resistance. La turkey. <laughs> it's enormous. What do you get that for? It's all I had left in the shop. <laughs> it, it isn't even plucked. You are a pillar, can't you? How much does that weigh? £27. <laughs> For two of us. Look, Brain, it was all they had left in the shop. Anyway, I like a bird I can get stuck into. <laughs> we'll still be eating that when we retire. We'll still be nibbling turkey sandwiches when they nail down the coffin lids. <laughs> you know, there's enough there to feed a small village. What'd you have to get that for? Well, it was an impulse purchase. I didn't think. No, you never do, do you? I wish you'd consult me before you go buying things we're going to split the cost of. I don't want you wasting our money. Oh, so I made a mistake. Well, take it back. Oh, no, I want my Christmas dinner. Take it back. Well, why can't we keep it? You can't keep it, Steve. Because I went and bought one and all. No, decided to stay here, keep Steve company. Who is he, anyway? Uh, he's what you might describe as out with a bird. <laughs> he's uh, taking his turkey back to the makers we bought one each, you see. That was a bit extravagant. Mm. Here, Denise, do you ever get the feeling that, apart from yourself, everyone's having a good time? Hmm. I sometimes get the feeling I'm the good time that everyone else is thinking of having. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Not looking back with regret, are you? Well, no. I mean, sometimes I think nothing would make me happier than to settle down with Sonia, get a place of our own, even start a family. Other times, well. Well, go on. I'm past blushing. Well, sometimes I think that fidelity is just a lack of opportunity. And, uh, <laughs> well, quite frankly... What? Well, I have these dreams about me and Kate Bush in a room full of hot Cornish pasties. <laughs> You as well? You're the third one I've had in tonight. <laughs> You've still got it. Shop was closed. Well, couldn't you give it back? Short of hurling it through a window or going round the back and shoving it up the cat flap, no. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Denise, could you do us a pint? If you'd wanted a pet, wouldn't you have been better off with a canary? <laughs> Don't you start. I'm knackered carrying that thing around. I feel like being on an assault course. What took you so long? Did you do the last mile on your hands and knees? Well, when I found the butcher shop was closed, Brian, I thought I'd take it down to Oxford Street, give it a look at the lights, and then we ran into one of his mates, and you know what turkeys are like once they get chatting. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, yeah, you don't know any worthy causes, do you, Denise? No, you'd want one of them, no. I had to take it to the toilet with me and all. <laughs> Why was that? Was the traffic making it nervous? <laughs> Well, that's the last Christmas Eve I spent walking the streets with a dead bird. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, then, Steve. Cheers. He is very quiet in here, Denise. Where is everyone? Your brother's theory is that they're all out enjoying themselves. You and me again, then, Bray. That's right, Steve, you and me. 
Another diary filled up. Another calendar to buy, eh? No calling it back. Another year gone. Hmm. Always seem to end up in some pub or another come Christmas Eve, don't we? A great inevitability. We're like two outcasts, really. We're sort of, well, untouchable. Hmm, I could be a mite less untouchable right now round at Sonia's if it hadn't been for your selfishness. I mean, other people, they're out of parties, discos, chatting up birds, taking them home, but we always seem to miss out. Do you think it'll always be like this? Not while hanging yourself remains a viable alternative. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see us in 50 years' time. Shackled together by bonds invisible. Turned into two dirty old men. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Steve. You, me and the turkey flashing down the high street in a raincoat made for three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, what are we doing tonight, then? Should we go and see a kung fu film? What, on Christmas Eve? Why not? I like kung fu films. Bruce Lee, Fists of Fury. Mm. Winnie the Pooh, Paws of Steel. <laughs> right, right, I'll go on my own. No, you won't. You'll take that thing with you. Oh, can't you carry him? No. Oh, Brian! <laughs> My arms are coming out of the sockets, Brian. You have to take a larger size in shirts, then, won't you? Will you take a turn? No! Whatever happened to helping others, eh? They'll never get you in the Boy Scout Hall of Fame. Listen, Steve, why don't you take it back home, empty your kettle into it, and use it for a hot water bottle? <laughs> I'll take a turn, Brian. People will laugh if I have to wear a truss. Hey! You can take it up to Harrow! <laughs> but it's named now for public school. So it may have all the advantages of a privileged education. You are. After all, it's very difficult for a dead turkey to get a decent start in life without the old school tie. And a few exam passes. <laughs> Just don't start your flaming Mickey taking again, Brian, that's all. I'm going back now, Steve, to take number one bird out of the oven. If you don't want to carry Rudolph the red-nosed turkey, I suggest you take it down to Westminster Bridge. Give it a swimming lesson. Can I, uh, can I help you? Uh, yes, well, uh, <coughs> the thing is, I've got a turkey. Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. It's not plucked. Yes, I can see that, sir. <laughs> you found this, did you? Someone lost a shopping, have they? Oh, no, no, it's mine. No, I bought it. No, it's just that due to a slight lack of communication between me brother and me, well, he bought a turkey and I bought a turkey. Yeah. Well, we got one each, you see. You got one each? That's right, yeah. You and your brother, you're quite fond of turkey, then, are you? <laughs> no, no, you see, we got the two turkeys, but Brian's already put his in the oven, and we can't eat both of them, and we haven't got a deep freeze, and I tried taking it back to the shop, but it was closed, so I was wondering whether you could... You were wondering if we could lock it up in the cells for a couple of nights, eh? <laughs> All right, son, you've had your joke for Christmas. All right. I'm not trying to be funny. I'd like to give it away to someone who's a bit needy, short of tomorrow's dinner, like. Oh. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, now, who have you tried? Well, I tried the Sally Army, but there was no one there. Probably off carol singing and playing the trumpets. Yes, it's difficult <laughs> to think, isn't it? Let me see. Well, I thought it was someone on their own, you know, like an old-age pensioner. Oh, no, it's, it's too big for that. <laughs> you want some sort of institution, really. Well, then again, they'll have bought theirs by now, you see. Well, how about one of the prisons? I think we can find a more deserving institution than that, sir. <laughs> uh, just hang on a minute, will you? Now, it's a bit of a distance from here, but they might take it. Yeah, well, remember to tell them it's not cooked. <laughs> <laughs> we three kings of Oriental, one in a taxi, one in a car, one on the scooter. Oh, hiya. Well, if it isn't Steve, you finally got here, then. Well, what are you doing standing by the door? All you need is a lamp, you look like a foolish virgin. <laughs> Why are you standing there with your arms folded? I'm practising origami. Eh? You know, the ancient Japanese art of being flummoxed by keyholes. Oh, you lost your keys? No, you lost your keys, borrowed mine and neglected to give them back. Oh, sorry. Hey, where's your mate? Last of the great dodos. 
Yeah. <laughs> Turkey. Where'd you leave it? Up at Heathrow, waiting for a clear runway. Yeah. <laughs> I gave it away to be distributed amongst the multitudes. Oh. Well, if the other one's cut, we might be a bit premature, eh? Have a slice and a sandwich. Right. Hey, what's that smell? Hey, something's burning. Must be the turkey! I'll get some water. Shall I? Shall I? I'll go and get some water. No, hang on, hang on, hang on! What is this for crisis? There's no time for keeping a cool You, we know what water do with this fat! What? Hey, go and get the extinguisher. All right, then. SD, keys, keys! Here you go. Are you right? Now, shall I go and get something? Look, do you want just, an axe? You're just right. don't panic, eh? All right, open the door, open the door. It's out. <coughs> I don't suppose we'll be able to eat it now. And now, to add a touch of sparkle to your Christmas day, three hours of fun. Still. The one good thing about London. You can always get a bag of chips even on Christmas Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got a lot to be thankful for. Oh, well. Down these mean streets, a man must walk, eh? That's right, Steve. There's eight million disasters in the big city, and you're just one of them. <laughs> Still hungry. So am I. In fact, I'm starving. So am I. But just go a big breast and a couple of drumsticks. <sighs> get your hands oh. off my chips. Who can that be? You paid the rent. Hang on. Could I speak to Mr. Stephen Weber, please? Steve, it's for you. It's the police. <laughs> Tell him your driving licence is in the post. <laughs> both again so much for that marvellous turkey. Oh, thank you for asking us. <laughs> hey, Steve? Are you enjoying yourself with all the children? Oh, never had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Steve. I think I detect the slight pressure of greasy infant hands wiping off excess gravy on my trouser leg. <laughs> Let's give him a do. Oh, shut up, Steve. Christmas. There's no use smiling. The grope one day, fine being nice, gets you nowhere. Go on, pull the cracker. Do you pull the cracker? Go on. Come the judgment day, it'll be something in your favour. I like you, I think you're nice. <laughs> oh, well. Merry Christmas, then. <laughs> 